All right, so we completed chapter 15 last week. <clears throat> and it's a chapter in which um, <clears throat> they were able finally to bring Margarita and her husband to a uh, spirit center to receive a, what you would call, I guess it's fair to call it, a disobsession uh, meeting. It was a mediumship meeting in which a, a medium received uh, the spirit Gaspar and they were able to detach, remove the Gaspar from Margarita and bring him to a place of treatment. In the process, process they are able to treat uh, Margarita and she walk in that house extremely sick and ill and by the end of the story she was quite happy and con content with the results she was much much better and just to recap a little bit further for those who are not following the stories with us in this book the the starts with the object objective of rescue gregorio who is a leader of a very evil faction in the lowest of the lower zone, uh, an ex-pope has many workers at his hand, causing a lot of disturbance uh, in, the surface, in the surface of the planet. And one of the victims is Margarita, someone who is deep to his heart, into his heart, someone that he literally loves, and that he wants to bring her back to the spiritual world as soon as possible. So he has a group of workers trying to accelerate her death, so she had discarnation, so she can go back to the spiritual world to be with him. In order to rescue Gregorio, you see over here that they rescue a huge number of people. One of them would be <clears throat> um, the, spirit, the spirit of, um, what's his name again, my goodness. Well, his name gonna come to my mind soon. But he's the one who was the, the big leader, the big boss of this of this work to get uh, Margarita back to the spiritual world. And uh, he he had a conflict not with Margarita but with Margarita's father, who was a judge who condemned his his son to. to prison uh, unjustly being accused of, of a murder that he did not commit. And in order to rescue God, you see over here, that they go through this process of rescuing, they are rescuing a lot of people in the process, starting with this gentleman, Saldanya, I finally got his name here. And in order to, uh, to rescue Saldanya, they rescue the son, the daughter-in-law, they rescued the judge, they arrested the judge's son, he was persecuting um, Saldana's uh, daughter-in-law. Through that exercise of love, of rescuing his loved one, Saldana is finally rescued, rescued, and by the rescue that means brought away from darkness and to start a process of, of illumination of understanding that love is, is the only true energy that prevails and should be utilized. And um, one of the workers in the lower zone that are extremely perverse and very attached to Margarita was this Gaspar that could not be reached 
by the spiritual workers. So, so deep he was uh, <clears throat> in the process of persecuting Margarita. He had no, they had no access to him. So they brought Margarita to this mediumship meeting and there they rescued not only Margarita, but Gaspar as well. So Gaspar is separated from Margarita and then he's taken for a treatment. So Daniel warns Gubbio, that is the leader of the enterprise to, to rescue uh, Gregorio, that the, now that Margarita was feeling better, that was not the end of it. That perhaps on the beginning of it, because now the army, so to say, of Gregorio yeah. would put up an even stronger attack, trying to reverse everything that is being done in Margarita's uh, help. Gubbio asked Sidonio, Sidonio is the director of in the spiritual world of the spiritual center where Margarita was take, taken for assistance and Sidonio complied sent some extra people to help in Margarita's house. In this chapter now, Pernicious Witchery, we take a break from Margarita's basically and we're going to concentrate in in the medium that did the help, the medium that was used for the communication of Gaspar that did not communicate much. We see as last reading that he was such in a state of um, despair, so attached on to Margarita on a mono idea. It was not yet what we'd call an avoid, but it was almost moving in that direction, so much so that he could not be helped by the spiritual workers because they could not reach him really. But through the process of uh, mediumship, and that's the value of mediumship, receiving the so-called uh, anemic shock when the spirits enter in contact with more dense flesh, dense matter of the medium, it becomes more accessible. And in a dialogue with an uh, incarnate individual in that mediumship meeting, they were able to help him. They were able to detach him from uh, Margaret, take him to be treated. And <clears throat> and then what we're going to see here, him, is more about a medium and the medium that was used in this process of this obsession. And I think you can start reading now unless somebody has a question. Okay, okay chapter 16, Pernicious Witchery. When the meeting ended, I noticed that the medium, Donna Isora Silvia, had undergone a perceptible transfiguration. While we were working, she had displayed shiny radiations around her brain, offering a pleasant personal ambient. However, by the time the session was over, she was surrounded by a dark gray fluidic substance, as if around her an invisible light has suddenly been switched off. Astonished, I approached Sidonia, who kindly responded, the poor thing is caught up in a venerable tempest of malignant fluids sent by low order spirits whom she has inadvertently turned into through the dark wires of jealousy. As long as she is under our direct influence, particularly during spiritual endeavors of a collective nature in which she acts as a receiving vow for the assistance energies, she is happy and in a good mood. A medium is always a source that both gives and receives during his or her work involving the two realms. When Isora's work ends, however, she falls back into her unfortunate condition. But isn't there anything we can do to help? Of course, it is because we haven't forsaken her that she has not yet succumbed. Even so, in a case like this, 
we have to be careful not to humiliate or hurt her when we are taking care of a young shoot from which we hope to pick a flower someday, we have to fight off invasive insects without hurting it. To parch the sprout of today is to lose the harvest of tomorrow. Our sister is a, okay. Our sister is a precious coworker with appreciable and invaluable qualities, but she, she has not yet let go of her jealousy regarding her husband. It is through that breach that violent vibrations of anger get in, causing her to lose excellent opportunities to serve and grow spiritually. Today, she had one of her worst days, completely handling herself over to such inner flagellation. She needs our help today because whenever a servant awakened to the good endures a wave of inferior vibrations throughout the day, he or she is setting up a visit with the beings and forces that, pop, that populate the night. He had a meaningful expression on his face and added, as long as persons have no real aspirations of a higher nature, evil in intelligences don't even bother with them. But as soon as they display purposes of sublimation and begin to purify their vibrational tone, their spiritual growth starts to be noticed and they are persecuted by spirits who delight in jealousy or rebelliousness. I could see that he's, I could see that Isora's case could be highly important for my particular studies. Realizing that Margarita had already been helped a great deal, I asked our instructor with Sildonio's consent if I could stay behind to study the troubling conflict between the missionary and those who influenced the dark screen of her sentiments that night. Gubbio agreed with a smile. You can see here that we, in this chapter, are kind of taking a break from Margarita's and her ordeal. And we're going to concentrate on the, on the case of Mrs. Isaura Silva. Isaura Silva, once again, is the medium in that mediumship group. Understands that medium that receives both psychographies and psychophonies, as we're going to see ahead. And she is the one who uh, was used for the psych psychophony to which Gaspar was assisted, and of course, by which Margarita was helped. Mr. Silva is Mrs. Silva's, um, is our Silva's husband. Let's start by saying that this is a woman that is known as spiritist that is reading the books of codification, that is reading the, um, the gospel according to Spiritus, who is receiving enlightened uh, messages from high, high order spirits. But yet, one of us, a spirit, Carrying still atavisms, carrying still vices and passions that corrupt us, that still holds us hostage in the in the mud of ignorance. Her main problem, as the medium has put over here. It's just as, as, as Sidonio has, has told us. And again, Sidonio is the, um, the spiritual director of that spirit, spiritist medium meeting. Okay? Every spirit center has a director that commands the, spirit, the spiritual worker. And Sidonio is the leader in that spiritist center. And of course, knows that well all the members of that meeting. And <clears throat> at the end of the work, when everybody was happy for the success of the, of the enterprise of that evening, Gaspar was being separated and was being taken to a place to receive his help. Margarita thanks everybody. She was feeling so much better. 
um, would we would expect everything to be a notion of flowers and uh, the first thing that Andrea Louise noticed is that the medium herself that in the beginning of the work all the the lights that could perceive around her and the lights of her herself and you're talking about the mid the, the, the spirit right was bright and happy and full of goodness but the end of the work, it turned kind of dark, it turned kind of gray, as if something was wrong. And of course, that caught Andre Louis' attention and he questioned was what, what's happening here? And when you walk here, we saw this medium. Of course, they are seeing things from the spiritual world, right? Full of light, bright and an example of joy and ready to work. And now at the end, it seems like she turned on 180 degrees and she then explains that, you know, although she is a work, although she's studying the spiritism, we have best, she still has one of the very serious problems of us here still attached to materiality, still giving easily to passions, and she suffers from the unit of the so-called jealousy. She has an adversely tuned in, into through the dark wires of jealousy. Every time that um, she has this attack of jealousies, then she turns into that dark gray uh, spirit that definitely reveals a illness of the soul. And you could say that jealousy is indeed a illness of the soul. And you can see here that it is self-imposed. Nobody gives her jealousy. Nobody, is, nobody causes her to be jealous. She is jealous on her own. Is a self-imposed thing, okay? And it shows, shows to us that even us, you know, trying to better ourselves, the process of liberation from those passions, the process of liberation from our atavismus, the process of liberation of some of those vices, it's, it's, it's hard work. It requires us to do a part that, right, as you're going to see here, no one else can, no one else can do it for us. Um, the word transfiguration for those anyone who's not, not aware is a not, noticeable is light uh, physiological alteration of the medium. Some medium has the ability that when they are given a communication, it's not they're gonna turn on something else, but someone who's paying close attention is able to notice some differentiation, some alteration on the physiological aspect um, of the medium. Change of voice is very common, but also a, a very obvious change on the physiology, physiognomy or the way the individual looks. Of course, I'm not talking about a great, or a slight uh, modification. It's very noticeable. And um, that was noticed by, by Andrea Luiz over there, okay? Oh, there's quite a few things over here. If we do recall the last chapter, when Sidonium was introduced to Andrea Luis by Gubbio, Sidonio spoke of his of his leadership group and, and saying that no, the group is doing a relatively okay work, but it could be so much more productive. It, they could be so much more so much more successful if the incarnated part of the group would cooperate a little bit more, would uh, be a, a little bit better to work with than what they are. 
And here in this tab, you see exactly what Zidane meant by it, right? Um, and that's what I usually say now, spirit is centered that our job as incarnate of a day is, try, is to try not to mess up too badly. Just do our best not to be such a corrosive part of the work that they do up there that will try to contain our passions, try to contain our vices so we can be a better servants and don't disturb them as much. And it here lives clearly that there is truth, truth, truth to it. Um, how one thing, one aspect of our passions, of our vices, can be so destructive to, to us as a individual spirits on the pathway of better ourselves. And of course, if the individual is harming oneself, it does take an effect on the group, how the group loses some potential because of the vices of one individual. This is not to accuse anyone of anything, that's what we are. No, I think I think this lady is represents pretty much all of us where we are, where we dry today, where we stand today. It brings again the words uh, inner flagellation to reinforce that again. This is this is her. We cannot accuse anyone anyone to be doing to cause in this way. That's, that is self-inflicted. Now you're going to see later that naturally there is always um, opportunistics. Pathogens are wrong that when they find um, a target, they will attack it and they will manipulate it to the best of their uh, abilities. We can see here how little things apparently little things like the jealousy for, by the husband can indeed be um, a big deal and cause problems. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Hello. <clears throat> go, go back, um, Elmo. Yes. You know, this, this passage that is underlined there, as long as persons have no real aspirations of a higher nature, evil intelligence, don't even bother with them. But as soon as they display purposes of sublimation and begin to purify their vibrational tone, their spiritual nature, uh, spiritual growth starts to be noticed, and they are persecuted by spirits who delight in jealousy and rebelliousness. But when I read that, I have an image of if you ever had a bucket full of crabs and they're, they're fighting amongst themselves, but when one tries to reach for the rim and gets the rim and is trying to extricate himself from the bucket, another crab from behind grabs him and pulls him down. And, uh, and I guess that's, uh, you know, these uh, lower level uh, spirits there and the other crabs in the bucket. Uh, I think it's a great, great analogy. Yeah, that's a perfect analogy, I, I believe. So for as long uh, persons have no real aspiration of higher nature, they don't have to bother with them. They are doing all their harm to themselves by themselves. I don't need to waste my energy for some, with someone who's already doing what, what I'd like them to do, right? So for as long as I keep digging in the hole to, to bury my, my, myself in darkness, nobody needs to wait to, to, to waste their energy to help me out to do that. I can do that by myself. As soon as I start to look away, as you posed so well with that example, try to dig myself out of that hole and seek the light, then there will be those who are still in the dark, who are still taking pleasure of being in the dark, 
try to hold me back. And there is an example of Margarita's right now, right? For as long as she is doing her own thing, they let her do their own thing. Now that she has joined the spiritualist group, now that she has that husband who is introduced her to the true teachings of Christ and everything else, now she becomes to be bombarded by those who don't want her to move up. Mm-hmm. We can see that. Um, we don't have time to go to personal stories, but it's very common that everyone that we start in that process faces more challenges and temptations than, 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 than they were before. You now the the proverb says the the more the more I pray, more ghosts come into my way. Because now that you are praying that you're trying to better yourself, that you you caught the attention of those who do not want to move up in that direction. I did not um, underline those things. I don't know how I ended up underlined, but uh, that's something that I almost missed and is that important. Thank you. Okay. He would wait for my return the following day. My group left, taking the infinitely happy patient and husband with them. I engaged in a conversation with Sidonia. For the time being, he explained, this house is under our watch care. Even though troublemaking of all criminal spirits cannot get in, Isora, unhinged by jealousy, can go out to meet them. Let's wait for her to leave her physical body during sleep, and you'll see what I mean. About two hours later, we saw Mr. Silvia standing at the door, waving to us from an outside from outside his physical body. Sidonio asked one of his assistants to take him on an educational field trip. Brother Sylvia stated downheartedly, I wish Isora could come along, but she just won't listen to me. Just let her be, Sidonio replied very emphatically. She's still not ready to heed our lessons. Mr. Sylvia's face displayed profound sadness, but he did not hesitate to go with his guide. I know a very short reading, but I think it's important to mention here. In the household, we have a uh, husband and wife, Mr. Silva and Mrs. Silva. Uh, at the end of the work, night's coming up, time to go to bed and sleep. The phys- physical body is at rest. Something that you always say is uh, where our conscience, where our intentions leads us. Mr. Silva, out of the body, is going to receive lessons, lectures in the high spheres of the spiritual world. Um, He's being being taken by by a group of spiritual workers to receive lessons, right? Sidoni asked one of our sisters to take him to an educational field trip. He would like to take uh, the, the wife with him, but the wife is not ready. Sidon says, right? Just let her be. She is still not ready to hear our lessons. Again, um, things that, and I keep reinforcing that because questions are coming very off, but can't we do anything about it? Can we, you know, help? You can help as much as you can, but the things that we need to do ourselves, we have to develop the level to, to get that ourselves. We can't take a, someone who is in first grade to take lessons um, at college level. You need to mature yourself to get to the level of college cla- uh, lessons. And it seems here that Mr. Silva is a few steps ahead um, and he cannot take her to the same educational trips and has to respect her free will. And going to see now, where does she go when the body is resting? Okay. 
Okay. Move up. Yeah. No. Okay. A few minutes later, Donna Isora appeared outside her body. Her perispirit was extremely dark. She went right by us without paying the least attention to us. She had just one thought on her mind. So Donia tried to say a few kind words to her, but they felt on completely deaf ears. He also tried to touch her with his luminous hand, but she hurried off on her unfortunate trip, leaving us to perceive that at that moment, our nearness to her was true torment. She was incapable of re registering our presence. Nonetheless, she did instinctively pick up on our mental vibrations and show that she was afraid of any spiritual contact with us. So Donio said that he could force her to listen to us and thus oblige her to submit with our reserva reservation to our influence. But doing so would imply the undue suppression of any possibility for a learning experience. When it came right down to it, Isora was the captain of her own destiny and inwardly she had the right to make mistakes in order to learn from them. That was the best means for her to experience happiness. He was here to help her conserve her physical energies as much as possible, but he was not here to shackle her to attitudes that she could not yet willingly agree to, not even on behalf of the good, which does not enlist slaves to spread it, but free servants who are content and optimistic. Thanks. So while Mr. Silva goes to receive educational, go to for educational trips on the spiritual world, Mrs. Silva, with a very dark appearance, with all her hair spirit, remember now that it's night, the, the physical body is at sleep, resting in bed, and the spirit, very spirit complex, go to places where they're conscience, the intention takes them. And she's in a certain state of distress that looking dark, she gets up, you know, the spirit of course, leaves the house, passes by Sidonia and Andrea Luis, don't, do not perceive the presence at all. Uh, Sidonia try to tell her a few words, it's not, it's not successful because it fell com on completely deaf ears, the quote over here. Meaning that at this moment that she is in that state of mono idea, so to say, she's focused in one and one thing only. And because free from the physical body, we has this, have have that disability to be so intensely focused in one thing alone that everything else becomes absolutely meaningless to us. That's why very often we see cases in these many cases in the in heaven and hell of the suffering spirits that they cannot hear, they cannot perceive the presence of help. Help is there, but they cannot go to the help that is available to them. And <clears throat> the case of Andrea Luiz in, in the in the in the lower zone for seven, eight years, depending on how you read the book. And the mother was always there by him, could never perceive the presence of the mother there. It was so in deep thought with his own suffering that he was not able to receive the help that was available to him. And I like very much the statement of Sidon in here, when he says that they could force her to listen and thus oblige her to submit without reservation to their influence. But by doing so, it would apply to undo suppression of any possibi possibility of learning exper experience. And that's something that is, requires a degree of faith, of understanding, or is even to accept this idea. When it, when come right down to it, 
Isaura was the captain of her own destiny. And inwardly, she had the right to make mistakes in order to learn from them. Very hard for us to really, even if intellectually with the brain, we absolutely agree, see what it is, to comply to that, to assimilate that intellect, intellectual understanding and make good sense of it with the intelligence of the heart and come to the, our emotions, it's very hard for us to do it, right? Um, to see, especially if it's a loved one, my parent witnessed the son or daughter going down the hill and to have this peace of mind to say, he or she needs to go to that experience. This experience is what will save him or her from greater trouble in the, past, in the future. Very hard for us. We have a tendency to interfere with those processes, interfere with the free will of the right of individuals make mistake. Even though um, intellectually, so, so to say, with the pure brain intelligence, we understand, we accept this, this idea. Uh, any questions, comment here? No. Let's go. Okay. To my great surprise, Sir Donio explained that Donna Izara did in fact have a wonderful ability for serving others. But if she wanted to lose it for a while, we could do nothing but a hand, hand her over to the current of her own will until she herself could awaken on a higher plane of understanding. She knew good and well that her husband was not her exclusive property and that insane jealousy could only lead her to a perilous spiritual situation. She also knew that the master exhorted his followers to forgive and love so that others who were unhappy would not fall into the abysses alongside the road. Nevertheless, if it was her will to linger on the pathway that was contrary to the one that the higher plane had laid out for her, we could only leave her circumscribed to the circles of a downcast or desperate mind so that time could teach her to reform herself. After these patient explanations, Sildonia concluded with a melancholic smile. Education cannot be imposed. Each spirit has to decide whether to grow spiritually or fall deplorably. We followed Donna Isora as she left the house and went out onto the public street. She quickened her step until she came to an old, dilapidated and dark house. Inside were two discarnate evildoers, cunning enemies of the service of spiritual liberation to which she had become a de devoted servant. It was obvious that they were hoping to poison her thoughts. They approached her gently, unaware of our presence. Well, well, Dona Isora, said one of the postures in a deceitful voice of compassion. Your feelings as a woman have received a serious blow, haven't they? Ah, my friend, she exclaimed, obviously happy at having found someone who could em emphasize, empathize with her imaginary and childish suffering. So you two know what I'm going, going through. Of course I do. I'm one of the spirits who are watching over you. And I know that your husband has been your heartless tormentor. In order to help you, I've been following that wrench everywhere he goes, and I've seen how he has been cheating on you. In tears, Dona Isora confided in the false friend. Yes, she grieved. You're so right. I'm suffering like crazy. There's no one in the whole world who's most miserable than me. Thanks. Okay. So where's those? The medium is our goes free of the body from, from the physical body. She goes right at this house where there are two suffering spirits, two spirits still being the crabs that tries to hold us back when we try to move in the right direction, tries to hold us in darkness when we try to move towards the light. 
as Ron always says, misery loves company. And there she finds those two individuals, the Sudius current spirit, who are very important, using what she gave them, them, using the target that, that they can use to manipulate her. And that's the jealousy that she has inside herself towards the husband. Once they have this target, they will use it as a means to reach her and will augment that stupid passion into her so they can have a strong hold of her. They will augment her jealousy by saying, yeah, that guy is really... Um, being unfaithful to you is, is being really corrupt to your relationships and really creates all kinds of fake news. Um, and she is in such a state of pathological emotional distress that she's become an easy prey for those individuals. It is very important that we understand here that they did not create this, this is hers. They are only using what she offers them and take the most advantage of it, make the situation a whole lot worse. Sidonio explains uh, to Andrea Luis, is that what you're talking about here? That there isn't much that they can do. I mean, the jobs that she has in, in her is something that she has work to free herself. She has this tremendous, wonderful ability of serving others, but she's not being able to, to, to serve herself, to help her, her, herself. Does she, marry, she, does she has merit for doing what she's doing to others? Of course she does. And in the very beginning of the year, as Don said, well, she is where she is right now because of our help. Because if she was not doing what she's doing that brings us towards her to help her, she would be in, in a, even in a much worse shape, right? And very important. Nevertheless, if it was her will to linger on the pathway that you, that, that that was contrary to one of the, the higher planes. It's her will, it's her desire. And go back to question 9-11, when the, that they cast the spirits, why is it so hard for us to free ourselves from our bad habits, from our passions? And the spirits answer is, it's not hard at all. It, we are amazed of how difficult you guys make it. So what is the problem then? The problem is the will. We have to change the will. When we, have the, when we change the will, then it becomes very easy. It's very hard to quit smoking for as long as you don't really truly want to quit smoke. When you truly want to quit smoke, you quit. It's extremely hard. for us to look deep into ourselves and admit to that, well, I have those passions and I don't have the willpower to, to want to get free of it. In many cases in Delwis books, we see that in our leadership meetings, the spirits come and say that they, they want to do something and when deep in that conversation, and you find out they know, they don't really want it. They would like to want it. And that's a different story. I'd like to really want to stop smoking. But it's something they hold them back. So why it's hold me back? It's myself. Did that establish a relationship with cigarettes that I had now that makes me like to, to, 
to smoke cigarettes. Although I know that it's bad for me, although I know this probably going to kill me, I would love to free from this vice, but I'm too attached to it. I, in the, at the end, I don't want to lose it. But when, once we modify the willpower, modify our will want, then, and, and we as, you know, associate the want with the need, yeah. things are not that difficult at all. Okay. And, now, and now she's suffering exactly this, this thing. She cannot redirect her will to free herself from that jealousy. And for as long as she's doing that, she's receiving the help that she's received for those spirits to keep her in darkness, it becomes extremely difficult for her to do anything. Comments, questions? And we see here how those spirits start of smart, how they really target that passion that publish has and how they augmented, how they support her in wrong and how they make her believe that she is right. That everything she's feeling actually has a true reason for being. Okay. I know, I know the extent of your moral suffering. I've seen the sacrifices you've been making, and I know that your husband prays at those spiritist meetings merely to cover up his sins. A lot of times while he's praying, his mind is full of lascivious thoughts about the women who frequent his home. Enveloping the careless medium in his smooth talk, he remarked, that's just crazy. It really pains me to see you bound to a rascal pretending to be a disciple. Well, that's the way it is, confirmed the poor woman, as if she were a delicate swallow bearing an important message, but suddenly caught in a van of honey. I'm surrounded by dishonest people. I've never suffered so much in my whole life. Nodding towards the sad scene, Sildonia informed me. More than anything else, the agents of disharmony are playing with her sentiments in order to destroy her potential as a missionary. Jealousy and selfishness are two gates of easy access to overwhelming obsession against the good. Due to her jealousy, she has linked herself mentally to the cunning enemies of her supplying commitments. We see, we see two, two things here how, as I already said, how they are able to make her justify to herself her jealousy, creating all these fantasies of, her, of the husband's uh, infidelity, accusing this, her, the husband of bringing a uh, woman into their home, the home was a spiritual center, with this Pretend, pretending to be uh, a work of, of spiritism or spiritualism, and, and in fact was only to bring the woman to their, to their home. But creating all these fantasies to which becomes real in her mind because she is tormented by his jealousy, by this jealousy. Now the thing that you see here is how she appreciates the feeling of being pampered by those individuals. As another thing that is, is self-inflicted that she's causing to herself, that she kind of appreci appreciates that these individuals support her, give her even more fuel for her to have this passion, this jealousy. She almost takes pleasure of, of people tapping her back. Oh, poor you, you're suffering so much. Oh, you, you don't deserve all that. And that kind of self-destructive behavior, people who 
it stays in this process of lamentation and the more you support their, their suffering, the more they enjoy being supported by the suffering, which makes it hard for them to, to elevate themselves, to get up, to stand up and start to act. That's one of the things that we see often in our spiritist meeting as well, when we have to tell the spirit, oh, shut up, stop this lamentation, get up and do something if you want to better yourself. As long as you sit on the corner into this deep state of lamentation, suffering, nothing of good happens. So you have to get up and start walking to gain some momentum. And at this point, they, they do the spirit start want exactly the opposite. They want to hold her to have no momentum of moving forward. And if she takes pleasure of being miserable as they are doing to her now, she will never try to get up and move on. The agents of disharmony are playing with her sentiments in order to destroy her potential as a missionary. Remember that this woman is, is a sensitive medium. She's working a leadership meeting. She's doing, she's doing work even with her problems. She's doing, still doing good work, helping others. So in, in, in a way, she has a mission, a small mission. No, her potential as a missionary doing something good. And those individuals don't want not only her to do something good, they don't want to see good at all. Jealous, jealousy and selfishness are two gates of easy access to the overwhelming obsession against the good. As I have said, they find those targets. Jealousy, selfishness, they all derive, definitely jealousy derives from pride. The prideful person has a tendency of being jealous, a humble person would not have the tendency of being jealous. Jealousy is a problem of uh, low self-esteem. Jealousy is a problem of um, a guilt mind that had being dishonest, being unfaithful themselves, then now they recognize if I have been unfaithful, my partner could do as else being unfaithful and have a tendency to be more jealous, those individuals, being at the conscious or the unconscious level. Again, those, everything has a genesis, but jealousy has a genesis also, has us in, in pride, in very low self-esteem, in a guilt conscience, and those are things that you know, that makes people to be very suspicious, very afraid that, that if I can cause harm to others, others can cause harm to me as well. If I can be unfaithful to others, uh, others can be unfaithful to me as well. If the partner that I have today is someone who was being unfaithful to have part in the past and with me, what could that partner do the same thing and now be unfaithful with me, with others? So there is a, 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 a cycle of bad news that I don't know if, if my partner of today is someone that has been unfaithful to her partner, her partner and left her partner to be with me, why can't that same partner do this to me and be, and, and be unfaithful to me and hook up with someone else out there. And if I know that that was happening, I have a tendency to be more jealous as well. So there is a cascade of events that leads to this bad, horrible vice of jealousy. Someone who has that potential of jealousy should really revisit his her own conscience and go deep into what leads me to this and, and fix it so they can get rid, rid of this very dark um, passion that is a target for evil doer spirits. 
comments, questions? Go ahead, read. Okay. Displaying immense sadness, he added, just watch. The cunning obsess obsessor embraced Isora and continued, Dora Isora, you have to believe that we are your loyal friends and true protectors of those who, like us, know of your hidden suffering. It's just not right for you to have to put up with the deceitfulness of an unfaithful husband. Stop putting up with his reunion of hypocritical friends. They may seem to love group prayer meetings, but they are just useless clowns. It's dangerous for you to, to be involved in mediumship in the company of that kind of people. Be really careful. The careless medium's eyes opened wide in response to the strange inflection of what she heard. Then she responded, kind and generous spirit, you know how I have been suffering in silence? Please tell me what I should do. Bend down destroying the illuminative cell that was functioning with immense advantage in the home of the young woman besieged by his sugar-coated poisonous arguments, the spirit remarked maliciously, Madam, you just weren't born for the circus. Don't let your home become a, showing, a show ring. Your husband and his social acquaintances are exaggerating your faculties. You still need a lot more time to develop yourself sufficiently. And enveloping her in the thick veil of doubt that annuls so many well-intentioned workers, he added, have you ever thought about unconscious deceit? I mean, you can be sure that you're not actually deceiving people. You really have to be careful. If you study the serious matter of spiritism intelligently and correctly, you will see that the messages that you have psychographed and your incorporations of supported supposedly benevolent spirits are nothing more than the pale influences of troubled spirits. And a large percentage are merely the products of your own brain and your sensibility stirred up by the misguided demands of the people who frequent your house. Haven't you noticed that you are fully, fully conscious during those so-called communications? Don't believe in abilities that you don't really have. Try to maintain the dignity of your home because your husband has no other purpose in mind but to exploit your excessive gullibility and send you down the sad road of ridicule. The poor woman, so naive and yet so useful, registered that slant on the matter with visible horror. Flabbergasted by Sindonio's passivity before such an insult, assault, I asked him respectfully, but far from calmly, don't you think we should come to her rescue? Sindonio, Thanks. okay. In this passage over here, as we listen to this, true spirit, we get to the truth of the matter of what is the intention of those true, uh, this kind of spirits towards this woman, towards this spirit. They don't really care about her. They don't have anything really personal towards her. Their aim is really to attack spirituals, the work of spirituals right here is to take her away from the good work of assistant others that she is doing, even with all, all of her problems, just like ourselves. Here we see the truth of the matter on how they uh, she is attacking, saying, all this nonsense of, the, of this, uh, this teachings of spiritism that your husband is bringing these people home. It's so um, fictional, and it's and it, and it's there is no truth in it. And even you on mediumship, I was able to see how they they really pray and they shake her belief and they shake her faith. Since that, when, what is the statement? Is not true uh, of uh, unconscious deceit. I mean that they make that the husband and his group is making her believe that she is actually a medium, that she is not a medium at all. That all those um, messages that she's receiving is creation of her own head. 
Uh, she is doing all that herself. There is no all the spirit dictating all of those messages to her that with all those psychophonies, it's creation of her own mind. And she's in such a state of distress. She has given herself to those spirits because they support her suffering and endorse her suffering that they now that she is now completely given into them that she start to believe in everything that they say and in reality what they are really doing here is not trying to help or to hurt her they're trying to just try just just try to undo the work that is being done in that spiritual center that's one thing that you very often we say once we place ourselves one moving towards the light we will have those who try to hold us back it's inevitable it's part of the the temptations that are here for us to overcome because if there was no potential to overcome one then we would not really progress because there is no challenge you know again it's the is the um, apple in the in the mosaic genesis right in order for us to grow god has to provide challenges to us so god says you can eat anything here but don't eat from that tree that it's not even fair right when somebody says that that's the one that you want to look for it <clears throat> so we face challenges as part of our maturation of growing up in order to get up and be able to walk, we have to overcome uh, <clears throat> gravity. You have to create more, more coordination once you learn it. You now we get up and walk forward without any, any difficulty, the great majority of us. But at one point, it was a challenge. And we see here how really smart those spirits are. They use her passion, they use her vice to attack the whole doctrine, to attack the, to attack the whole work of, of, of mediumship to the point to make her not believing on her own poten- potential as a good worker. And then, don't you think we should come to her rescue? That's of course what we're saying. And I don't, I don't think any one of us think the same way here. I say, wait a minute, are we seeing this and not doing anything? Come on, Sidonia, you, you're, you're supposed to be a, uh, a superior spirit. Are you going to just watch this with your hand crosses? I don't know about you, but it's helped me. I'm right now just like Andrea Luis. What do you mean? You know, can, can we do something over here? They ask that the question that he is asking, I think is the, the question that we all, all would have at the moment, at this moment. And what is Sidonia's um, answer to, to Andrea Luis? We're going to see it now. But is there any question, any comment up to this point? All right, so let's read. Sidonio smiled in understanding and explained. Didn't we prepare her to defend herself just a few hours ago during the prayer service and with the fraternal help we offered? She worked as a medium with us. She listened to a wonderful moving gospel talk regarding the perils of selfishness. She collaborated decisively so that the good could be concretized. And she herself lent us her voice so that we can teach principles of salvation in the name of Christ to whom she must entrust herself. And yet, just because her husband was kind to a few women who needed his enlightening and fraternal and fraternal company, her thoughts became darkened with jealousy and she lost her inner balance, handing herself defenselessly to spirits that exploit sentimentality. So Donia nodded towards the discarded malefactors and explained, Such low characters proceed with mediums like thieves, 
who after plundering a house, awakening the owners and then hypnotize and force them to take their place, compelling them to believe that they themselves are actually the thieves and deceivers. They approach the minds of careless mediums, wreak havoc on their inner harmony, upset their tranquility, and then with un imperceptible and subtle sarcasm, they force them to believe that they are deluded and despicable. A lot of missionaries let themselves be well laid by the sort of false argumentation we have just heard, and they scorn the sublime opportunities to spread the good through the invaluable sowing that would enrich their future. But isn't there anything we can do to get these evildoers out of the way? Of yes. course there is. There is restraint. Okay, you're going to stop there. Okay. Thank you. So to the question, is there anything that we can do? And Sidonis, the, the very sentence tells everything here. Sidonis is saying, didn't, didn't we prepare her to defend herself just a few hours ago during the prayer service and, and, and with the fraternal help we offered? She worked as a meeting with us. She listened to a wonderful moving gospel talk regarding the perils of selfishness. She collaborated this decidedly so that the good could be con con concretized. And she herself lent us her voice so that we could uh, teach principles of salvation in the name of Christ. So, Somebody brings you a rain boot. Somebody brings you an umbrella. What is that person telling you? It's common sense to say, well, it's going to rain. If you choose to leave the house, without the umbrella. If you choose to leave the house without the rain boots, what the rain coat, is there a good chance that you're going to get yourself soaked? Who do you have to blame? Who is in fault? Again, as we just heard on Thursday, during a huge storm, the water is coming up. The, the guy is, is at by the window, and someone come and say, "Still walking? Come with us. The rain is coming. It's going to be very difficult." And the guy said, "No, don't worry. I'm praying God will, will take care of me." The water start to come up. There comes a boat, a small boat, and they again invite him. The water is continuing to come to to come up. It's gonna be rich your window very soon. Come up and come with us. No, no worry. God's going to take care of me. The water's going to the water start to climb up. I have to go to the roof of the house. Again, come in a uh, helicopter, throw him a basket and say, No, I don't need a basket. God is taking care of me. Later on, he is in, ends up in the spiritual world and he looks at God and says, man, I've been praying and always asking for you, you didn't let this happen to me. And God will ask, answer. Well, I send the people to, to warn you to, to come with them. I send you a boat. I send you the helicopter. What else do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. This is very often our situation. This is the Zoom situation right now. When um, Divaldo Pereira Franco complained to Joana de Angelis that Joana de Angelis was giving advice things and helping everyone but not him, what was the answer? Open this book and read. And the book says, you, you, you. What another book? It says, you, you, you. To whom are you thinking I'm talking to? Talking to you. Now you follow if you want. 
this this is her case, and it's our case very often. Again, this one pretty much represents us. Each one of us with our difficulties, our main problem is jealousy. Each one of us have ours. Mm -hmm. The help is there. And the help is, is, is in preparation for the challenge already. The help is given the umbrella, the rain boot, the rain coat before you leave the house. Once you leave the house without it and it rains, now you're going to get wet. Mm. And that's exactly um, the case of this woman. Yes. Such low uh, characters proceed with mediums like thieves. This is specific for mediums. Of course, mediums is at a, perhaps a little bit at a higher risk for having a more extensive ability to interact with the physical, with the spiritual world. But remember that we are all mediums. We can all interact with the spiritual world. We, we are all being targeted in accordance to our passions, in accordance to our vices. You don't need to be an extensive medium. Again, I believe that this woman is a good representation of most of us. Doing our best, moving, I don't know if she's doing our best, I'm sorry. But going through the mode, Move, going to spiritual centers, listening to the lessons, trying to learn the things, and still the will is not there to make true great modifications or very minimum modification that it could do a lot more. Those, those evil strategies that they use superbly, you can tell these are really smart people. Um, Amoral or morally very unevolved, but intellectually pretty good. They really know how to strategize and how to use what's given to them. But they only, they only work when we provide them the fuel, provide them the opening. And what is it? Is it still our inferior sentiments? Again, sentiments produce thoughts. Thoughts is energy, energies um, attract like energies. And if the energies that I'm, that I'm producing that derives from my sentiments is out of low order, I will attract low order spirits. It's a law of attraction, that's a natural law. And the one way to get rid of it is to replace our sentiments, to elevate our sentiments that our sentiments will produce more elevated thoughts. And then by the law of, uh, of attraction, law of affinity, we will attract uh, spirits with more elevated thoughts as well. And a warning that a lot of missionaries let themselves be waylaid by the sort of false argumentation we just heard and they scorn the sublime opportunities to spread the good through the unvaluable sowing that will, would enrich their future. Again, unfortunately, something that we see and in our 20 years of being ship news, we have seen mediums come and go. Some for other causes, but some just gave in to those temptations, to those challenges, and could not stay in the path. That's one of the reasons that we are very careful in our mediumship meals on who will participate or will not, because the to be able to resist and to stay on the pathway is very difficult. And unfortunately, when they come to the medium meetings as a medium, when they leave the meeting, they leave the whole thing, they leave the whole spirit and they leave the whole group. And um, we think it's much better to continue the studies, continue with the books of codification than participate in military meetings. 
Munichip Mir is just a small percentage of the goodness that you can get. If one can just read the gospel, it's 10,000 times better than participating in any leadership meetings. Because that's where we truly will educate ourselves to elevate the quality of our sentiments to produce more elevated thoughts. And again, Andrea Luis, here through all of that, the explanation from Sidonia say, well, look what he already done for in order to help her. But he's not happy with that again. But isn't there anything that I can do to get these evil doors out of the way? And again, I think it's a question that we are all asking, right? At least I would. So even if it's her doing it, even if she's the one who attracts those individuals to her with her low vibrational level, can't we get those people away from her? Can we get those people away from her? I think it's um, the way pretty much that we think. And let's see what he does answer. Okay. But isn't there anything we can do to get these evildoers out of the way? Of course there is. There is a restraint and panacea everywhere, trying to fix situations by means of violence or artful diplomacy. But regarding our endeavors, which would work better, shooing away the flies or healing the wound? He smiled enigmatically and said, then said, such difficulties are valuable lessons that amongst incarnates and discarnates, the medium spirit must take advantage of as invaluable experiences. It is not our job to withhold a lesson from the pupil. As long as mediums are willing to listen to accounts that flatter them in their personal spheres, making it a condition for their taking part in the work of the good. It means that they still value the phenomenon and the lower aspects of the individual individuality rather than their duties on the divine plane. In such a situation, they linger for a long time amongst idle discarnates who fight over the same prey. And consequ consequently, they nullify priceless opportunity to grow spiritually, because after a certain amount of time in which they refuse help, they temporarily lose the edifying company of more highly evolved friends who frequently do everything they can, they can to put them on the straight and narrow path again. Subsequently, they fall vibration. They fall vibration. Why is the moral level appropriate for such a situation and cohabit that with spirits whose company they prefer? only to wake up later and realize they have wasted precious time. Meanwhile, Dona Isora's obsessor was prattling on. Just study your own case. Talk to competitive, competent scientists. Read the latest news on psychoanalysis and don't waste the opportunity to live like you used to. Otherwise, you can go crazy. And he went on to say sacrilegiously, I'm speaking to you in the name of a higher realms and as a faithful friend. Yes, I can see that, agreed the timid and downcast Isora. Just then, Sardonio approached the trio and made himself visible to the hypnotized Donna Isora. She registered his presence and with some difficulty and exclaimed, I can see you, Sardonio, our faithful spirit friend. Due to his low emotional pattern, the Verbose obsessor was unable to perceive our presence, so he said mockingly, Oh, come now, you can't see anything. It's pure illusion. Give up this mental vice or suffer even greater imbalance. So Donia returned somewhat discouraged and told me. From the very moment that Isora got evolved, involved in the dark realm of jealousy, her mind has been a difficult situation. And she is in no condition to understand what I tell you. Even so, maybe we can take a different approach to helping her. We volatated speedingly and found the medium's husband in an instructive meeting with several spirit friends. So Donio told Mr. Silva to return to his physical body immediately in order to help his wife, 
who was in dire straits. But the Soviet did not hesitate. He rushed back to their bedroom and re-entered his body. Beside him, his wife's body was stretching in repeated contortion, contortions, gripped by her unspeakable nightmare. Under Soldonio's kindly influence, he began waking her up by nudging her gently. In corporeous tears, Soria opened her fear-filled eyes. Oh, I'm so miserable. I'm alone, all alone. Deeply influencing the complacent and kindly husband, Soldonio urged him to say something. My dear, remember our faith and how much we have received from our beloved spirit guides. Oh, don't you give me that nonsense, she retorted angrily. What do you mean, he repeated patiently. Haven't we been helped a lot, a lot through your own mediumship? No, not at all. It's all a farce. Those messages are just a fruit of my own imagination all an expression of myself. Listen, Isora, you've never, you've never been a liar. I can see you falling into the trap of our unfortunate brothers and they're leading you into a purgatory of jealousy, but Jesus will help us set things right again. Right again. At this point, Sodonio turned to me to say, Andre, I think you have witnessed the point of the lesson. This is going to be a long drawn out conversation the miraculous concourse of time, we will pacify this respectful, respectable workers, exclusivist and careless mind. Go back to your work group and remember what you have learned here today. Profoundly touched by what I have said, I thank Sardonio and left. Okay, uh, sorry I have to read so much because it's the end of the chapter. I'll try, our time is, is ending, it's four minutes left. And I think it was important to finish this quite short chapter, but extremely important um, for us. If we have the humbleness and the probably smartness of seeing this woman, some of the problems that we have ourselves in our uh, attempt to better ourselves, and we are, again, there is no negativity in, in here. So an opportunity for us to, to look at ourselves and the questions that we usually have. Again, and Andrea Luis saying, can't we do anything? I mean, can we just separate these people from our from, from hell once and for all? I think perhaps we could. It's done as well. um, there is restraint and panacea everywhere. Panacea. The, trying to fix situations by means of violence or artful diplomacy. And this is the good part. But regarding our endeavors, which would work better, shooing away the flies or healing the wound? We are eternal spirits in the pathway, in the pathway of perfecting ourselves. We are not here to swipe the dirt under the carpet. We are here to eliminate the dirt. We are not here to put a band-aid over the wound. We are here to heal the wound. Could they do something? Could they go ahead and take away from the, the, those spirits and have never they come close to her? Yes, they could. Would that kill the wound, the spiritual wound of jealousy? No, it would not. Does she need to go to this experience to be able to recognize it to, in order for her to, to heal herself? Yes, and that's what a higher order spirit does. That's what is so hard for us to understand and to practice as um, we see a lot of the ones going to one pathway to have the ability to, to allow them to go to the difficulties that they are going through in order to heal themselves. That we can definitely shoo away the flies. 
that's easy, but to heal the wound is the hard part. And as a Tana Spirit in the pathway to perfect ourselves, we need healing so the wounds, the so the flies will never come to bother us again. If there is no open wound, there will be no flies, flies to come because there's nothing to attract them. To attract them. And that's how um, coyote spirits work in order to help us. Such difficulties are valuable lessons that amongst incarnate and discarnate, the mediums the spirits must take advantage of invaluable experience. And it is not our job to withhold the lessons from the pupil. It's again, hard for us to input this that you understand the intellectual level at the, at the intelligence of the heart. We know, but it's my son, you know, it's my, my, my daughter. I can not see them suffering like that because we are only seeing this moment and not seeing the eternal spirit. And we see how clever the, those um, evil doing spirits when they say, I am speaking to you in name, in name of the higher realms as a faithful friend. So to leading, leading her to no longer believe in, in the work that she's doing, serving others, saying that they know better because they are is speaking in the name of the higher realms. And she's so on the take that she seeks to listen to them. Now Sidon has another alternative to stop them. She try, he tries himself, she presents herself to her, and she is able to notice him, but they are do not, which leads to believe that with her help, with the help that she's receiving, with the work she's doing, she's already a little bit higher morally than those spirits, which is easy for us to see. So much so that she can perceive her presence and when he presents him, uh, herself, but the others still cannot. But her mind is so corrupted by their influence that they tell her, nah, it's so an illusion. He's not, he's not here. You don't have none of this, that, that power. And she chooses to believe him, to believe them. Sidon has one more strategy. He calls the husband and remember that they are the physical body boat sleeping. The, the husband is able to take her back to the physical body, wake her, her up. And upon waking up, he tries to speak with her saying the work that they do and how wonderful it is, that what they learn from this doctrine. And she says, no, it's all an illusion, it's all lies. Because the influence that she received from those from those for those two spirits, and um, he continues to speak with her, and at that point, she doesn't say, "And always go back to your work with Margarita. This is a working process that um, you take a long time to be resolved." But I think again, and always bring this message to us, this chapter to us is to show to us how hard it is, especially mediums being more likely to, to receive influence from the spiritual world. But again, we are all mediums. How we need really to do our best effort to internalize, to learn all the lessons from the gospel, take from the intelligence of the brain, the intellect, and putting the intelligence of the heart so the, the heart so you can produce purifying sentiments, more elevated sentiments, and that will not create the compatibility, the attraction of uh, less of our dispute who will try to hold us in darkness. Any comments and any questions? All 
right. Thank you, everyone. So, Carol, can I make a final prayer, please? Yes, certainly. Thank you very much, Elmo and Sarita and everyone for participating. Infinite creator and supreme intelligence, we give thanks for the opportunity to be together today as brothers and sisters for the study of the book Liberation, Chapter 16. We give thanks for a better understanding of the compassionate and strategic work of high order spirits. They're helping with the interaction and magnetic forces, fraternal healing, for helping suffering discarnate spirits. Wisdom, goodness, love, and focused will can be a catalyst for healing and change. We have, we have witnessed this through our studies. We try to keep our energy balanced and positive with faith and courage. We are grateful to our spiritual benefactors and the good spirits who are guiding us and inspiring us. May we receive the, the peace, love, and light of Christ within us so that we may share with others who are in need, who need our prayers and also our positive vibrations. We remember that charity is love in action, which means it's proactive. We humbly ask for safety and protection for our family members, for all spiritus centers, and for those who need our prayers globally, and many prayers are needed. Spread fraternal love. As we close our meeting now, we remind ourselves to go forth as beacons of light and love. Go forth now in peace, gratitude, unity, and positive vibration.